Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and today I have some concerns about the new Honda Transel. Is it just a tall street bike? I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing. I know many of you, like me, have been incredibly excited about all the rumors coming out about the new Honda Transalp. And then finally Honda blew the lid off of the new Transalp 750 at EICMA just a week or so ago. And I made a video incredibly excited that the Transalp was real, that it existed, stoked about the stats. But after a week or so of kind of reflecting of looking more deeply at the stats and checking out the bike itself, I honestly, I have some concerns. Even the tagline on Honda UK's website says, the all-round legend of adventure touring returns. All-round legend of adventure touring. And yes, we talk about adventure touring and adventure motorcycling interchangeably sometimes, but I think here the term adventure touring is pretty telling, particularly when you consider the rest of the evidence. Is it not the off-road monster we were hoping for? Is it not the direct competitor to the Tenere 700 that we were hoping it would be, that we thought it would be? Let's consider some of the evidence. At first glance, there's a lot to be excited about. It's got a 458 pound curb weight, you know, just slightly heavier than the Tenere. It's got 90 horsepower, which is 20 more than the Tenere. That's more like a KTM than a Honda. 55.3 foot-pounds of torque, that is slightly higher than the Tenere. And at first I was like, hell yeah, they're creating this off-road monster. It's gonna be a beast, it's gonna be so fast. But that is really not Honda's thing. When they announced that Hornet 750 engine, and we sort of speculated that it would end up in the Transalp as well, everyone thought they would detune it. That's what companies do with motors that they use in both on-road and off-road bikes, because you need a different kind of power and a different kind of power delivery for off-road riding. So at first I saw those numbers and was stoked. It's gonna be a very fast off-road bike. But the more I think about it, the more I realize, well, they didn't detune it because to them, it is a street bike. They're leaning into the street bike touring part and leaning away from the off-road chops of the motorcycle. So that's a concern. Then I started looking at the design of the bike and there are some very concerning things on the motorcycle. I mentioned that the exhaust is low, but upon further inspection, if you look, the exhaust runs directly underneath the motorcycle, kind of like my Honda Grom did. Then there is no frame or anything underneath that exhaust. So the exhaust is the absolute lowest thing on the bike, and it is incredibly vulnerable there to sliding over rocks, to stuff being kicked up, to all kinds of stuff that we encounter routinely when riding these big heavy bikes off road. Not only that, but there is no stock skid plate on this bike, zero. Even the Tenere comes with a, albeit flimsy, but it does have a stock skid plate. Even my 250L came with a stock skid plate. Admittedly, it was plastic and, you know, about the thickness of a drinking straw, but there was one. There is no skid plate whatsoever. Nothing to protect the engine or the exhaust underneath on this Transalp 750. And that's a concern from a design perspective, but also it tells you something about the designer's intentions. It tells you something about where Honda thinks this motorcycle is gonna be ridden, and it's not in the places where I wanna ride it personally. That exhaust running underneath, even if you add a skid plate, is gonna be bearing the brunt of all the logs and rocks and stuff that you're scraping that bike over in the back country. It just, it just doesn't scream off-road bike to me. The other thing that doesn't scream off-road bike to me is the modes. They're very excited about the rider modes on the motorcycle, but this bike has sport, standard, rain, gravel, and a user-defined mode. Did you hear me say off-road mode in there at all? No, there is no off-road mode and no gravel mode doesn't count. Gravel mode is for street bike riders who are afraid they're going to kill themselves the second they get off-road and that back tire might slide a little bit. That is not a true off-road mode. And yes, you can probably set it up in the user-defined mode to be pretty useful off-road. I'm not saying that you can't. I'm not saying this is not a bike that can't be taken off-road. I'm saying that's not their intention. That's my concern. By comparison, the Twin has six modes. Tour, gravel, urban, and off-road. It has an off-road mode and then two user-defined modes. So don't tell me they don't just have an off-road mode. They do, the software exists, it's on the Africa Twin, but for some reason they chose not to put it on the Transalp, and I'm afraid that reason is they didn't design it to be a bike that is used off-road extensively or um, on difficult off-road. I'm starting to think that this is maybe an 80, 20, 70, 30 bike, heavily road-biased based on the stats. Another thing to look at is they're really proud of their focus on wind 
protection and quote, all day comfort. And that's not a bad thing, I like that, but I've never owned an adventure bike that was designed uh, with good wind protection and all day comfort. Those are highway features. That's something that you lean towards in a touring motorcycle. In a bike that is off-road biased or that is designed to spend a lot of time off-road, you don't worry about that stuff as much or you don't focus on it because we accept that our on-road performance is gonna be a little bit less comfortable. On the subject of aesthetics and wind protection, this bike looks a lot more, if you look at it, like an NC750X or a CB500X, particularly in the front end. No, that's not a deal breaker. No, that's not a telling piece of information by itself. Yes, Honda likes to reuse components. It's why you see the same foot pegs and turn signals on everything, but designers design bikes to evoke a certain feeling, to, to appear and appeal to a certain type of rider. And I'm just saying they are not focusing on appealing to off-road riders. This bike looks too much like their street bikes and not enough like their off-road bikes, like the Africa Twin, like the CRF, like those bikes. It just seems like this is a road touring bike that can go off-road. And the last piece of evidence that I think is pretty compelling is suspension. This bike does not have adjustable suspension. It is preload adjustable, which is what you need when you're adding a bunch of luggage or an extra passenger, right, to a motorcycle that you're spending a bunch of time riding on the highway. But without compression or rebound adjustment, it's not gonna be able to be adjusted in stock form to set it up perfectly for your more difficult off-road riding conditions to make it work for what you're riding. And that, to me, is pretty telling. That's a pretty big miss if you're trying to make an off-road focused motor motorcycle and that concerns me. So arguments to the contrary, am I overreacting? Maybe, we won't know until I ride the thing. You're gonna go to their website and you're gonna say, but it's in their ADV category. That means they think it's an adventure bike and you're not wrong, but guess what else is in the ADV category? The XADV scooter, the NC750X and the CB500X, all of which are fine machines that do just fine, but they are not a Tenere 700. They are not a KTM 890. They are street bikes that can do a little bit of gravel. I was excited from the very beginning for this Transalp. I was hopeful that I was finally gonna get the mid-weight Honda adventure bike that I've been hoping for, that I've dreamed of. I am a Honda fanboy, you guys know that. That is my favorite motorcycle manufacturer. Pretty excited about the idea of a Honda Tenere 700, but this is not it. Compare it to the Tenere, just for a moment. The Tenere was clearly designed from the ground up to be off-road capable. It is less comfortable, it has very little wind protection, it is a very narrow seat, and things like the anti-squat. That anti-squat technology, which is designed to give you increased traction when accelerating off-road, designed to make it a better, more capable off-road motorcycle, that tells you, at least it tells me, that this motorcycle was designed to be ridden off-road, and it can also go on the street. This is an off-road bike that is tolerable on the road. The Transalp seems like the opposite. Transalp seems to me like it is a street bike, a touring bike, a lighter touring bike that can go off road. So if you have to go down a gravel road to get to your campsite, you know, if you want to go up a logging road a ways, if you're trying to get to trailheads, things like that, places cars go, places light trucks go, this bike will do it. But is it designed for the most hardcore off road? Is it designed to tackle BDRs? Yeah, I don't think it is. I don't think that's the intention. Now, people are always coming in and being like, well, sure, if you put some money into it. I don't disagree. Redo that suspension, find a way to rig up a skid plate that isn't attached directly to the engine, which is unfortunately what you have to do with the design they have. And yeah, you might be able to make this into a capable off-road bike, but you could also just buy a Tenere for the same price and it's mostly ready to go. So yeah, those are my concerns about the Transalp 750. I'm still excited about it. I still wanna test ride one. I still may buy one just because I wanna test it and ride it and see what we can do with it. We'll see, time will tell, hopefully I'm wrong, but yeah. So what do you all think about the Transalp? What are your feelings, am I wrong, am I overreacting? Does it look like a street bike to you? I heard a lot of you voicing those concerns on the last video. Let us know in the comments. Let's talk about what this bike is for and if it's gonna do what we want it to do or what. So thank you for watching, I appreciate you, and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Ah, uh, thank you. Excellent!